Hi guys, Billy back and this time we are looking at the Toys Era, the omniscient 1-6 scale collectible figure, aka Hemdoll from Thor. Now Hot Toys never made a Hemdoll themselves, so this third party company called Toys Era have decided to take it upon themselves to make said figure. Now, the box is a little taller than normal, you can see it is an actual fact lying down because I can't fit it into the shelf, but you can see it on the front here, there is a nice sort of spot UV of Hemdall's face just in the background. And then the title of the figure is all in gold foil print, which is appropriate for this figure considering all his armor is gold. And it's quite a nice subdued and subtle front of the box. Then on the side, we've got a little bit of that sort of as guardian sort of design with the gold glow on it. Omniscient up the top, same on the bottom. And then on the back there, there's sort of a subtle picture of the little bit of the Bifrost where the sword goes into. And then we've got all your warnings and your choking hazards and whatnot. But that's about it. It's a shoebox design, nice and simple, very subtle. And then we're just going to slide this up and see if we can't have a look at the figure itself. And then we've got a classic foam insert. We take the top off and then on the inside, we can see the figure itself with a few hands darted around inside. And if we pull this layer off, we can see underneath we have his weapons and the stand and that's about it okay let's just actually get all this out and have a look at exactly what it's like and here he is straight out of the box just standing in a museum pose and you can see he doesn't actually come with a lot but honestly he doesn't massively have to this is Hemdall from the first Thor movie maybe a bit of the second film he's in his sort of classic regal armor you know, he, this is when he's standing by the Bifrost. And speaking of the Bifrost, here's the sword that turns it on and off. I believe it's called a uh, Hoovard or Hoovard or something, Hovard. But yeah, this is the big old sword that he carries. And it's massive and it's metal. You can see it's got a lovely sort of black chrome hint to the actual blade itself. And then the details on the sword here, you can see on the hilt. It's nice, I, I will say, I do feel it might be a mild soft in detail but there's enough detail in there for you to be able to you know tell what it is and there's even details in the handle here just on the pommel or whatever the bottom bit of the sword is called there's enough detail there to make it look premium enough and looks really good and the fact that it is die cast is a really nice touch however it might be difficult for him to hold because it is quite a weighty big long sword he also comes with two daggers that sit on the back. This part here is like rubber and it clips onto his back belt. And then these are the weapons inside. They look really good. Some very nice detail in the hilts again. And it's got that lovely sort of dark chrome effect on the blades. Now my only concern is over time because this is a rubber piece and these are pure metal, what's likely to give first? It's gonna be these rubbery bits onto the actual holder itself. You want to be careful putting them in and out all the time. If you're going to put them in, I'd say just keep them in there unless you're going to do some photography because you don't really want this guy snapping these bits off because then you can't fit them on the back of his belt. And he also comes with some variety of hands that are sword grip hands and everything like that. And they're fairly nicely detailed. They do uh, match the skin tone of the face pretty well. Sometimes these hands can be like stock hands so then they don't actually fit the paint color on the face that much but I think they've gone ahead and painted these in the same sort of paint that they used for the face and speaking of the face let's actually have a look at it it's very very nicely detailed you can definitely tell that it's a uh, Idris Elba in the sculpt you can see they've even given him the orange eyes make him look really really cool this helmet is fixed and glued on there so don't try and take it off but he can look left and right pretty well however there's not a lot of up and down and also speaking of articulation, the arms can go up about that high. They can go forward about that much before they start to be restricted. There is a double bend in the arms, but you're starting to trap the pleather in there. And the hands are on wrist pegs that can move up and down, but they are restricted a little bit by these forearm gauntlets. The shoulder armor here is slightly articulated. So when you lift this guy up, you can get the armor out of the way to get his arm up. Waist swivel wise, you can turn about that much, that much that way, and then you can bend him forward. However, it's starting to push these armor pieces on the torso together, so be very careful of that. You don't want to keep him in a pose that long because it looks like these will start digging into the pleather and it will start to damage all the way around here. 
legs go out about that far. The legs can go straight up that far. They don't kick back very far. Double bend in the knee gets about 90 degree bend. And there is a nice amount of ankle pivot forward, back, left and right. And here he's in pose with the sword in what I can only assume is gonna be a lot of people's first choice for poses, which is him standing there calmly with the sword in front of him, both hands on the handle, just standing there and watching, which is pretty much what he did for the majority of the film. And I have to say, overall, the details on this are very, very nice. Considering this is third party and they don't have a license for the actual character itself, it is surprisingly accurate to how Idris Elba looked on screen in the Thor movie, especially in the armor. You've got a lovely sort of gold accents all the way through, but there's also a lovely sort of dark bronzy wash going all over the armor to really bring out those sorts of little details inside the chest and on the forearm gauntlets and things like that. There's lots of lovely Celtic designs just in the helmet all the way across the brow and things like that. And it really does bring this figure to life a little bit and make it pop on the shelf. So if we turn it to the side, we can even see there's details in the fabric just underneath here. He's got gold accents through the actual trouser legs. And if we lift this up, we can see there's sort of like a chain mail effect down in the front of the loincloth area. If we flip it around the back, we can see there's still lots of dark wash and detail on the back of the armor itself. And if we have a look at the stand, we can see that there is a sort of bifrost pattern just on the base. It's really nice and matte, so it's actually got some grip to it so you won't slip off, which is really good. There's no nameplate or anything because um, I think they're fully aware now that people would like to put Hemdall on there. And because they can't, they leave it open for you to do if you so wish, which is good. It's a strong, sturdy base. It will do exactly what it says on the tin. You don't need to use this if you don't. I won't be using it, but that's because I always use my clear Perspex stands that I use for the majority of my figures in the collection. But it is definitely a nice addition to the whole set. But that's not to say you couldn't get him into some sort of semi-dynamic pose if you wanted to. Just as an example here, you can see he's just got his sword over his shoulder like he did in Thor Ragnarok. And then he's sort of moving forward, looking like he's ready for a bit of a scuffle. But I will say that the sheer weight of the sword will make it a little bit more stressful on the wrists to get him into these sorts of semi-dynamic poses. We can also see that the wrist peg is exposed a little bit when he's posed like this and the wrist peg is a slightly different color and it stands out a little bit when you're actually getting posed up like this. However, you can put him into some different poses. So it's not like he's a glorified statue or anything. And again, just another sort of semi-action pose where he's got the sword held up ready to swing it. But again, I would recommend if you're gonna do something like that, because he doesn't have two gripping hands, it's very hard for him to actually hold onto his sword properly, simply because he has two dagger hands, two fisted hands, one gripping hand on the left, and one semi-open hand on the right. So it does become a little bit difficult for him to fully grip the handles like, like, like you would if you're fighting, because this hand does look a little bit more casual with him swinging it around like that. And my only concerns are over the long term, it's you know a lot of pleather, this is pleather, this is pleather, it's going to be very difficult for this to um, survive a very long time without the pleather drying and cracking up. Um, I would recommend start treating this straight away as soon as you get it with some 303 wipes or something, just because you don't want it to be breaking up. You want this thing to last as long as possible. I doubt we're going to see another Hemdor 1-6 scale figure for a very long time, if ever. So yeah, you might want to take care of this guy. Again, doing big poses like this is going to put stress and bends and stuff inside the pleather here but also at the same time stress on the joints the weight of this could actually loosen the joints over the time if you position it in the wrong way you never know it could snap a wrist peg in the long run okay and just to get him on an even playing field i've put him on a perspex stand next to age of ultron thor and thor ragnarok thor and i have to say i'm mildly underwhelmed by the height simply because I do feel that Idris Elba in the movie felt a lot bigger in terms of scale with the Hot Toys Thors. He is uh, roughly on par with the height of Gladiator Thor. Um, you can see here the top of uh, Thor's head from Age of Ultron to the top of the helmet here. 
yeah he, he's a little bit undersized which is probably why they give you the slightly thicker base here because once you've got him on a thick base like this i think that ups the height a little bit in fact let's try that now and see if that actually gives him a little bit more presence and yet yeah, when you know it straight away he actually looks and feels a lot more like Hemdall feels in the movie when you see him but um yeah it is a shame that the height is a it's just a slight tad bit shorter than maybe he should be maybe some uh, ankle extenders would help with that actual height and give him that little bit more presence if you do plan to stand him next to Thor but however it's for the price an absolutely gorgeous looking figure As gorgeous as my wife, yes. Yes, Claire, as gorgeous as you. <sighs> Diva. Detail in the face is nice. I love the bright orange eyes. The details in the armor are very good. I think the uh, nice sort of Celtic designs in and across the helmet work really well. My only criticism of the armor is occasionally it might be a little soft in details, but not much. The pleather in the suit is always gonna give you anxiety. That's just the way it's gonna have to be because this guy was kitted out in so much leather in the movie. The weapons, you really can't complain that much. They're, they're proper die cast metal. They're very heavy, very imposing. His sword is just impressive. I also like the, uh, the stand. I do like the little Bifrost design burned into the base here. It really does work with the aesthetic of the figure. And I think Toys Era have done a brilliant job bringing Hemdoll off the screen and onto your shelf. And if you ask me if this is the direction Toys Era are going in, I would really like to see them do sort of Odin from the MCU. I know Hot Toys did one, but that's rare and it's, it's difficult to come by now. And I think after seeing this guy, I believe that Toys Era could knock it out of the park and give us a really great looking Odin. So uh, yeah, Toys Era, get on it please. Oh, and if you've got time, the Grandmaster as well. Okay guys, that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe. If you do me a favor now, if you can get the fuck out of my cave, I'm gonna go put this guy in with all the other Avengers on the shelf and he's gonna look awesome. Bye bye guys.